Welcome to Sunday at Appearances. Let's try an experiment. Hi, Sergey. Spencer. Relax your body. Take a couple of deep breaths. Relax even more deeply. Let your thoughts go. Just dive with inside. In the dark, moist innerness of you. The empty presence. In you. Relax more. Relax your body. Let go of all tensions, just for a few minutes. Let your mind just stop. Pay no attention to the thoughts. Just go deeper, deeper into the experience of your innerness. Now, in that quiet darkness of your own sense of being, being alive, being sentient, all of this is called the amness, your beingness and all that it contains, the quality of being present. The quality of being in the center and still listening to the sounds outside, feeling your diaphragm move, sensing your aliveness, being of no mind, still mind, just relishing the peace of doing nothing. And in that nothingness, still being aware of all around you and within you. Fall back into this emptiness, sitting there quietly, listen to my voice, feel your body, and more, feel your sense of presence, which is amnes, which is aliveness, which is sentience, which is consciousness, which is awareness. All of these things you are. Now, sitting quietly, feel the emptiness behind you. And feel the fullness in front of you. That emptiness filled with sounds and your own existence and your joy, and your relaxation. But behind you is nothing but emptiness, the darkness and emptiness. There's where you really lie. Now, I want you to imagine yourself falling backwards into that emptiness, into your true self, into the eye. Fall backwards now. Imagine yourself falling, falling, falling into that emptiness behind you which contains everything. Relax. Feel everything in front of you that you perceive with eyes open or eyes closed, the sounds, the feeling of your body the tension in your toes, wherever it is, and fall back away from it. Fall backwards into nothingness. From that nothingness, you'll still be aware of somethingness, your own sense of presence, your own existence. But you'll separate from it by observing it. 
You're watching Somethingness now from nothingness. Fall backwards further into nothingness. You're falling and falling into nothingness. But while all ahead of you is still somethingness, its existence, its life, the life force, its energy, it's your sense of presence, it's your consciousness. But thoughts, when they arise, if they arise, they're there too in front of you while you fall backwards into your true self. Awareness, the I, not the amness. The amness is in front of you. The I is reclining backwards into nothingness. And nothingness is observing somethingness. Continue to fall back. Now, in front of you is somethingness. In back of you, it's just emptiness, a dark emptiness. The more you fall into it, the less you are aware of yourself. If you fall all the way back in, there's nothingness at all. No sensations, no sound, no hearing, no taste, no touch, no mind, no thoughts. And yet you're aware. Something inside of you is aware of both. Something inside of you is aware of somethingness, consciousness, sounds, being alive, the life force, your sense of presence, my voice. And the other part is the silent witness sinking backwards into nothingness. For nothingness is its source. And yet you're aware of yourself sinking into nothingness. That which is aware of both somethingness and nothingness, that is your heart, that is your bones, that is the marrow in your bones, that is the essential you, the ground of your being. Now, if you can do this same exercise when you're waking up or falling asleep, that's when you cleanse, you run into the membrane that separates somethingness from nothingness. That's where your awareness can pass from everyday consciousness and awareness of your body and the world into true nothingness, just the darkness. And the more you go into the darkness, the less you are until after a few minutes of being in there, you've totally disappeared as consciousness. There's just nothingness, comforting nothingness, beautiful nothingness, peaceful nothingness, blissful nothingness, the end of strife, the end of struggle, the end of pain, the end of thoughts, the end of striving, just being nothing. When you can do this exercise consciously, going back and forth between nothingness and somethingness, you will have discovered your immortality, the eternal awareness of I. Not I am, but of I who is sometimes aware of amness in the world and sometimes aware of nothing, nothingness, as that peaceful darkness that swallows consciousness, swallows it up until it's buffed up. Then when you discover that I, 
who's watching the comings and goings of consciousness, of consciousness being swallowed by nothingness, you realize that you are apart from both. You are separate from consciousness and you're separate from nothingness. You are the beginning and end of both. Those are just appearances appearing before you. You are that which brings awareness to the entire thing, the entire emptiness or the entire nothingness and the entire somethingness. When you wake up, the light of consciousness is lit and you're aware of this world. It's like entering a room and turning on a light switch and suddenly you're awake. You're in a body and you're conscious of the world. But if you can be aware when you go to sleep, it's like leaving, entering a room and turning the light off and just going into that darkness. And as you go into walking into that darkness, you disappear step by step. You are erased from existence until there's just nothingness. And you're aware of the nothingness until you're not even aware of the nothingness anymore because awareness too is swallowed by nothingness. float in that nothingness now you are nothing you are peace you are a kind of subtle bliss no strife no struggle no need to understand nothing to understand no existence no objects no smells, no taste, no touch, no objects of mind, just peace, a peace beyond understanding, peace that is deeper than bliss, the peace of not being as opposed to being with all of its struggles, with all of its pain and elations and ups and downs in mood. Okay, come back into this world. Note how you feel, bringing the peace of nothingness back into your daily life. You see, there are many who believe that to be enlightened Every moment of the day, you have to be self-aware of the totality of your beingness and of nothingness and of the I behind it. But as Robert said, I see the world as you do. I experience the world as you do. If I didn't, I couldn't function in this world. So I have to share the same world as you do. When I'm in the world, I see it the same way, feel it the same way, hear it the same way. But I know it's just consciousness. Just like my body is consciousness and your body is consciousness. It's all appearances. There's no reality behind the appearance. It's just a show. You can believe that there's an external world which is solid and real behind it, but you don't have to because you can never know that world. You can never know if there's a world behind the world. And all those teachings in science about atoms, quantum, strings, general relativity, 
All that is just mind stuff. It's not experiential. You don't see atoms. You read about them. You don't see orbiting. You read about the equations for motion of planets or of electrons. It's all made up. It's convenient fiction. It allows you to create atom bombs so that you dream of annihilation. All of science and philosophy is just thinking. All of the world is just thoughts, appearances. It has no substantive reality on its own because all that you could ever know is what you see, hear, taste, feel, touch, and think of, as well as your own sense of presence. That's it. Everything in the world outside of you really exists only inside of you as your perception, your thinking, your beingness brings all of the external world outside into you. Another way of looking at it is uh, you're a network of nerves that are connected to the brain's nerves. Billions and billions of nerves interconnected with flowing electricity, creating a sense of presence, of consciousness. Is that world out there truly real? There's no way you could possibly know. Because all that you could know is in your consciousness. Any experiment that you do is in your consciousness. Any thought you think is about your consciousness, is within your consciousness. You can read Einstein, Fermi, Carnap. You can read about quantum mechanics, general relativity, thermodynamics. And it seems confirmed because your sense world seems to confirm and experiment the predictions. But so what? So what? It's your world, therefore, why wouldn't your thinking conform, of your world, conform to what you see, hear, feel, taste, and touch, and think? Yet all of it, all that you are, all that you see, all that you hear, is merely appearance. They can't prove that there's substance behind it. That it's enduring by itself, apart from you and you're endearing, enduring. What if it's all just a lousy play and you were born in Cleveland or Portland or Columbia or Australia? It's just a fantasy. And that's what Robert said it was, a fantasy. You don't exist, you're not real. You appear to be real. But that's an appearance only, it's a mirage. You, as the seer, are entirely beyond consciousness and even non-consciousness, the no nothingness. Somethingness, consciousness, is swallowed by nothingness nightly and is permanently swallowed by nothingness after death. And then from nothingness, Something that appears somewhere else in some other body, some other time, and begins to show all over again of being a bubble of consciousness that sees a world, that sees itself, that sees its body, that senses its own presence and senses the presence of things around it. Then that bubble collapses and disappears, and another bubble exists somewhere else. There's no continuity. Robert didn't claim any continuity between the bubbles. There's no soul that transmigrates. There's no soul that's reborn. That's an individual's point of view. 
but you have to transcend the individual's point of view to see the entirety of the interplay of consciousness and nothingness. Nothing exists, just appearances. You are an appearance in consciousness. Your body is an appearance in consciousness. You don't know of your body except through your own consciousness of the body. And this is where Ramana and Nisargadatta differ. Ramana says consciousness is deathless. Spirit is deathless. It lives on after the body. It doesn't need the body. The body is only appearance. Consciousness is everything. Nisargadatta says even consciousness is an illusion. And that's what Robert told me. I am beyond even consciousness. Even awareness, even the body. Watching the whole thing. But it became very boring just watching the whole thing after 15 years. Just watching. Until there came to me love. And with that love and an explosion of energy within, I felt God arising within me, the life force acting through me as an explosion of light and power and a sense of gratitude and all my sins were washed away I was forgiven for everything that I had ever done and felt pure and clean I could feel the energies circulating in my body just as I can now I can watch them move as currents with colors and lights I can feel my own divinity and shared divinity with all humankind and with God as the life force and as consciousness intertwined. So I beckon you each to every morning and every night pay attention to the transition between nothingness and consciousness. Be aware of everything that happens during that transition. And you can only do it by practicing. When you wake up in the morning, when you wake up and you're aware, try to go back to sleep again immediately and watch that transition of going into nothingness and what happens to your sense of self as you go into that nothingness. And be aware that you were aware of nothingness even though you weren't aware of consciousness. You weren't aware of yourself as a being. You saw it be evaporate, being swallowed up by nothingness, but you watched the nothingness swallow you up. So that which was swallowed is not real, but the witnessing of it is real. And when you go to sleep, it's a little harder to try because if you pay too much attention, you'll never get to sleep. If you pay too much attention to the transition to be too alert and too conscious to go to, go to sleep. So you have to practice this sort of in the daytime too. Every hour or so, take half a minute, relax, relax. Take a couple of deep breaths and just go inside. Become aware of your own fullness, your sense of presence, your energy. Give away your thoughts. Give away your tension. And just relax within and become well aware of your feeling of presence, that energy state of being present, of being the manifest consciousness, the energy being that is inside of your body and extends outside into the world.
Some philosophies call this the soul and say it's immortal, but it's not. It's a manifestation, almost physical, of consciousness within a body. Because the body is the only sensor by which consciousness can know the world. Consciousness without a body can't be aware of the world. Imagine if you died and you were conscious or aware, but you no longer had hands to feel, eyes to see, ears to hear, nose to smell, no tongue to taste. What would your existence be in a sightless, soundless, tasteless, feelless emptiness? Wouldn't that scare the shit out of you if you're completely aware and there's nothing to be aware of except nothingness? Fortunately, you wouldn't have a brain, so you couldn't be thinking about it. But it might scare the shit out of you when you first feel it. Being lost in emptiness, with nowhere to turn, nowhere to orient yourself. Some say this is what happens to people when they die. Their sentience is alive for a while after the physical death of their body for four or five minutes, and they no longer have sensations, they're in nothingness, and it can terrify them. I think otherwise. I think if you're used to being in nothingness, if you're used to going inside of yourself, going inwards and downwards and backwards into nothingness, nothingness becomes so comfortable Nothingness becomes so relaxing. Nothingness becomes your safe room, so to speak, where you can fall backwards onto a lotus floating on the lake of consciousness or unconsciousness, a nothingness. So that when you die, what is lost is consciousness. But you know nothingness well and you sink into that nothingness and disappear. And whatever was that's aware of everything is still aware of the nothingness and of your disappearing into nothingness. You can watch yourself disappear into nothingness and be no more. I think it's, it's, I think it's probably as Nisargadatta said or a thought happened. It would be immensely happiness to be free, free of consciousness and its struggles, being free of the body with its pain, being free from their failing kidneys or failing liver or from poverty, to be free at last with the bounds tightened around you as consciousness. Freud posited two things in man. The urge to life and the urge to death. Eros and Thanatos. The will to have sex, to procreate, to live. And the equally powerful desire for emptiness and nothingness, for everything to be undone, everything to be completed, everything to go away. Okay, come into the presence now and let's see if we can have some questions.
Uh, Sat says, for several years I've been doing intense emotional sadhana, bringing everything to the heart, huge openings. There have been glimpses of being the totality. I am concerned that I am too attached to this processing now as it is blissful. Don't worry. Absolutely go for it. Just keep the bliss going and it will end of its own, of its own account when the time is ready. But as the bliss is flowing, don't stop the bliss. Just let it go and fully experience the bliss in your nature as bliss. Don't worry about being attached to it because at some point it will begin to disappear and you, you will have waited for it to disappear because the blissfulness itself can become unnerving and can become an effort to sustain that bliss, to sustain that attention on the bliss because the body becomes pumped with energy and bliss and it's effortful while sinking into nothingness and being nothingness is completely peace without any tension whatsoever. So while you're in the bliss, enjoy it because the longer you have it, the easier it will be to go back to it when you want it. Because being in the nothingness or being in emptiness can become very boring. If you can take your way back to bliss when you want to, all the better for you. You don't have to stay in any state for a prolonged period of time. Just long enough to recognize it and be able to visit it when you want. Whether it's nothingness or bliss or being an ordinary schmuck, an ordinary human being with relationships, pets, a job, demands on your life. Because you can always stop during the day five or ten times a day and go into nothingness. And if you've learned how to experience bliss, you can go into the bliss. Find your divine nature, which is bliss nature. Once found, learn how to retain it. Once retained, when it decides to go, let it go. You'll be willing to let it go because you'll see that there's an effort in the bliss. And letting go means you can relax. Your body won't be pumped up. Your sense of presence won't be heightened. Heightened awareness is stressful. The continued what would you call it, remaining in Sahaj Samadhi, even though it's effortless for the, the uh, adept who has attained Sahaj Samadhi, is still in a being the state that is difficult to maintain because of the energy involved. It's so much easier to let go of the bliss and fall backwards into nothingness and just watch the bliss recede as you become happier and happier going into nothingness. Max, you can go into nothingness ten times a day for a minute or two. Forget about the PhD during that minute. Get to enjoy being away from it just every hour or so, every two hours. Take a minute or two off and just plunge into the emptiness. Put some chanting music on. Get a playlist of 10 or 15 chants and have it repeat over and over and over again in the background of your house. That will bring bliss. And you can go through your one or two or three or five or 10 years of bliss until you don't need it anymore and it falls away. Okay, uh, can somebody read me the questions? Ooh. Spencer? Sure, let me just... Uh... 
after Sat, there are four from Sat and then Maria. Can you read them to me in in linearly? Okay, so after Sat, Maria said, in reaching nothingness or being nothingness, what is it that it finds fear? I can't hear you. You turned your mouth away from the microphone. What is it that what? That we cause fear. The nothingness. We fear. The, 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 we are all to, a, to an extent attached to our body, to our minds, and to our sensations. Now it's easiest for us to go to sleep because we're used to it. Every day it happens and yet we become alive at the, in the next morning. But to go into eternal nothingness is frightening for some, is frightened, frightening for those who want to live, for those who find life valuable, for those who find life interesting or blissful or productive, those that have a strong need for eros, for doing this in the world. And if nothingness comes to them, not in sleep, but as in death, or thinking of death, that attachment or that identification with the body and losing it, the possibility of losing it, will create fear as a reaction. But that's only because the person is attached to living, and most people are attached to living. That's why um, so many people are afraid of death. That's why uh, people in front of firing squads get worried, because they're about to experience the big sleep, not the little sleep. And they don't know what's there in the, in the beyond. And they don't want to let go of their children, their wife, their husband their pets. They feel that's a great loss, too much of a, to tolerate. Imagine how much pain we go through when somebody in our life dies, or a pet dies, or we lose something that's precious to us. Imagine losing everything. For some, the whole idea of losing everything is so traumatic and scary that they don't deal with it. Spencer, what's next? So, after that, Sot says, is this process of not the moment's identification with the character? I have no idea what that sentence means. What processing is he talking about? And who's identifying with what character? What character are you talking about? I can't answer that question, Sot. Okay, next one, Maria. There's no question there. That's a that's a statement. Brenda, what's next? Brenda. Read Brenda. Spencer. I'll read it if you can't, Spencer. Spencer, read Brenda. I guess Spencer's gone. Brenda, is nothingness slash emptiness not just another phenomena of consciousness? Well, yes and no. You may be aware of nothingness, but there's no consciousness in nothingness. Nothingness has no consciousness in it. No eating, no smoking, no taste, no touch, no sound, nothing. It's nothingness. While you can be aware of nothingness, it's, there's nothing to be aware of. It's a disappearance of consciousness. Consciousness becomes swallowed in nothingness. Now you're, apart from it, 
as the absolute watching this process of nothingness swallowing consciousness. But no, it's not something uh, that's an appearance in consciousness. It's something that's an appearance to you as the absolute. Consciousness is your everyday life. This is what you think you are. Nothingness is also what you are, but you really don't accept it as part of your life. And there's no consciousness in nothingness. Consciousness is somethingness. Nothingness is nothingness. S nothingness swallows consciousness. And consciousness is not aware of nothingness except in that transition period, briefly. But there is something that's behind all of it that's always aware of both somethingness and nothingness. And that's what you're tapping into by doing this kind of exercise. Maria says something afterwards, which I can't quite follow. Are there any other questions? Okay, I'm going to play a chant. Don't turn me off. Just listen to the chant that I play through your earphones as it, as it comes through from me rather than each of us coordinating the various chants. This way, if our chat room disappears with the sound, we'll still be able to hear chanting through my channel. Okay. Nama Shivaya, don't play it, just listen. Andrew asks, could you tell us about coming out from nothingness to the work-a-day world in a way that you recommend? I'll just repeat. When you wake up in your morning, in the morning, your morning, become aware of coming out of emptiness. It takes a while to get a knack for doing this. But if you come out and you're aware and then you realize you haven't been aware of coming out of nothingness, what you can do is since you're so close to sleep anyway, just go back to sleep and watch yourself return into nothingness. And then don't go too far into nothingness, just enough to know that you're losing consciousness. Stop 
and then go back into consciousness and just play with that boundary. Go back and forth, back and forth. So it's playing, waking up and going to sleep several times after you first wake up in the morning and you realize you've made that transition without being aware of that transition. You say, oh fuck, I missed a chance. Well, you don't, you haven't. In the first five or six seconds after you wake up, it's real easy to go back to sleep, as you know. You can even do this during the daytime when you're taking a nap. Go back and forth between sleep, nothingness, and being awake. And don't come fully awake, just enough to know that you've been awake. And then go back into nothingness. And wake up. And be aware of consciousness arising. And then be aware of consciousness disappearing. And that is the absolute in you, as you, that's aware of the transitioning of consciousness. And it's that absolute which is really you, or the most deepest part of you. But you don't have to stay in that absolute as a totally all-day witness of consciousness. Just know of it. Be aware of it. Be increasingly aware of it through practicing watching awareness arise and watching awareness disappear. Arise, disappear. Awaken into somethingness and then collapse into nothingness. Wake, sleep, wake, sleep. Practice that a dozen times every morning, six times every morning when you first wake up. Then you'll get increasingly get aware of being aware during sleep, but it won't be consciousness, it'll be something else. Because it, you'll see it as not happening to you, but as happening to consciousness and nothingness. You'll be witnessing them. So you are standing away from them. You're watching consciousness arise within you and embrace you. And then nothingness, somethingness, and nothingness. But you're watching this. You're watching consciousness and nothingness. This is enlightenment. That's when you realize you're beyond life and death. You're beyond the body. You're beyond nothingness. That's true self-realization. And that is the beginning of the rest of your life as a sage. After you realize your immortality, your deathlessness, then you become a prostitute or a gigolo. Forget about all this spiritual stuff. Just delve back into being a human. Become a chef at a five-star restaurant. Become a rock star. You've done self-realization, now move on. Use it. <laughs>